The purpose of this short video is to introduce the viewer to the three-dimensional structural aspects of the heparin molecule. Heparin is probably most familiar from its use in the clinics as an anticoagulant. This molecule and related sulfated materials are important for a large number of normal and pathological structures. In order to understand the function of heparin-like materials, it is important to understand the three-dimensional aspects of its structure. Shown here is a heparin dodecasaccharide, a 12-unit heparin fragment. Heparin is a heterogeneous sulfated polysaccharide belonging to the larger family of glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs for short, and represents an important class of macromolecules. Cur currently, heparin has been shown to interact with over 50 different proteins from many functional categories. Structurally, heparin is a linear, pseudohelical, alternating copolymer with a period of approximately four residues that consists of repeating units of pyranosyluronic and two amino 2-deoxyglucopyranose residues, which are the derivatives of six carbon sugars and are all found in their cyclic hemiacetal form. The pyranosyluronic residues, now shown in red, can either be glucuronic or iduronic acid. Furthermore, these residues can have multiple sulfation patterns, as will be described later in more detail. In this case, all the sugars in red are identical iduronic acid residues. The remaining residues, now shown in blue, are all glucosamine. The individual glucosamine residues are capable of multiple sulfation and acetylation patterns. In this case, however, all of the glucosamine residues are identical. Here you can see how the individual residues are all connected via so-called 1,4 glycosidic linkages as highlighted in yellow. These linkages give heparin chains the flexibility that may be important during protein binding. One of the properties that make heparin so unusual is that it has the highest negative charge density of any known biological macromolecule. This is due to the high density of sulfate groups, shown in yellow, and carboxylate groups, shown in red. Each colored cluster contains a minus one charge, while the entire heparin change has an overall minus 24 charge, and it is only 40 angstroms long. Because of this high charge density, it was initially believed that heparin interactions were purely ionic in nature. While ionic interaction certainly plays a role in, in interactions, there is increasing evidence that indicates many of the heparin protein interactions have specific structural requirements such as observed in its binding to antithrombin 3. Although heparin is often found in the extended helical shape shown here, heterogeneity on the residue level creates many structural variations. In order to understand these variations, we need to now take a closer look at the individual residues. The first residue we will examine is one of the glucosamine residues and is readily identifiable by the nitrogen attached to the number 2 carbon. Notable in this particular residue is the 2N sulfation and the 6O sulfation. However, this residue type has many possible structural variations. To better understand these variations, we will now take a closer look at this residue. As shown here, the residue is 2N sulfated, however also very common is a substitution shown next of an acetyl group for sulfate on the nitrogen. This substitution has the interesting effect of causing a change in preferred conformation of the neighboring iduronic acid residue. As we will see later in the change in the iduronic acid conformation can greatly affect the way it engages in protein interactions. Returning now to the original N-sulfated form, we will take a closer look at the O-sulfation possibilities for this res residue. This particular residue has O-sulfation on the number 6 carbon. Also possible is the 3-O-sulfation alone. A rare combination is the one shown now. It has the N-sulfation shown previously along with 3 and 6-O-sulfation. While this combination is rare, it is one of the key requirements for binding with antithrombin-3 and the basis for the anticoagulation drug Arixtra. Finally, this residue can have no 3 or 6 O sulfation at all. Keep in mind that at physiological pH, 
Each one of the O-sulfate groups carries a minus one charge, while the alternative unsubstituted alcohol group is neutral. From these examples, it is very easy to see how different substitution patterns strongly affect both the accessible surface and the charge of the individual residues. Also of interest in this residue is the way in which the two sulfate groups are connected to the sugar ring, as can be seen here with the number two carbon is actually located in the sugar ring itself, while the number six carbon is tethered outside the ring, giving the sulfate group additional flexibility. Now you will see that the rest of the atoms have been removed, leaving only the sugar ring in blue. In this view, it is easier to see the resemblance of a home recliner that is typical of the chair conformation. As stated earlier, the glucosamine residues, while having different substitution patterns, are found almost exclusively in their ch chair conformation just seen. This is in contrast to the next residue we will examine, the hydronic acid residue. Depending on the substitution pattern and protein interactions, this residue can be found in either of two conformations. We will explore both conformations, but the one shown here is positioned in the chair conformation. The key features of this residue are the 2O sulfation, which is located in the so-called axial position, or down in this case, and the carboxyl group located on the number 6 carbon. This residue can also be found as shown now lacking the 2O sulfate group. With the other atoms hidden, again is it, it is easy to see the chair conformation. It is, in general, it is true that the chair conformation just shown is the most stable form for a 6-carbon sugar. However, due to the, the bulky nature of the 2O sulfate group, this residue is also stable in a much different conformation. As we approach the next residue, keep in mind that it has exactly the same chemical composition, only the conformation, or shape, is different. This hydronic acid residue is found in what is called a twist or skew boat conformation. This is different from the traditional boat conformation in that the number one carbon, as illustrated in green, is found about the plane of the ring as opposed to below it. Now shown for comparison is the actual boat conformation. Of key importance is the location of the two O sulfate groups. In the previous case, this residue was located axially, while in this case it is more in the more energetically favorable pos equatorial position, straight out to the right. Depending on the conformation, this sulfate can be in dramatically different positions. Realizing that approximately half of the residues in a heparin fragment are hydronic acid, this flexibility allows for a great variety of possible three-dimensional structures. This concludes the short introduction to the three-dimensional aspects of heparin structure. Hopefully the diversity of structures found in heparin and related molecules can be better understood in the future. This may allow us to understand its many roles in normal and pathological biological processes as well as to help us develop new therapeutic agents.